Hey everyone, Old School Pokemon here. Today's video is going to be discussing something a little bit different. Um, I'm going to be discussing whether or not it's worthwhile to individually list and sell Wizards of the Coast era common and uncommon cards. Basically those cards that you see listed on eBay for less than $2, so anywhere from 99 cents up to $2. Those real cheap eBay listings. Is it worthwhile to individually list and sell those cards? Now, this is actually something that I've gotten a lot of questions regarding, um, whether or not it's worthwhile. And the short answer is, it depends. Um, if you're someone who's more of a collector, who kind of um, occasionally sells on eBay, um, is still kind of learning, learning the eBay process, learning how to ship items out and all that, I definitely wouldn't recommend this. Um, definitely, definitely not worthwhile um, if you're that type of eBay seller. However, on the flip side, if you're someone with an established eBay store, you kind of understand the workings of eBay, understand shipping, and kind of do this more frequently, kind of have that uh, foundation built, then if you're looking to expand your business, you're looking to try something new, I would definitely recommend. Um, granted, it does take a lot of time um, between organizing these cards, uh, photographing these cards, listing these cards, shipping these cards. The time factor is very large. So if you're someone who isn't looking to put in um, a tremendous amount of work, tremendous amount of effort, then again, this probably isn't something for you. Um, but if you are if you are willing to put in the work, um, it's definitely definitely worthwhile. So, getting into kind of my eBay business, um, as I'm recording this video, I currently have just north of 1,800 e active eBay listings. So, 1,800 active eBay listings. Of those 1,800 listings, 950 are. Uh, items that are priced at either a buck twenty-five, a buck fifty, or a buck seventy-five. So nine hundred and fifty items priced less than two dollars. That's more than half of my eBay um, eBay store inventory priced at less than two dollars. So is it worthwhile? Um, to give you a quick um, some quick figures. Um, as an eBay seller, I can see. Um, kind of my sales metrics um, for up to, usually up to 90 days. That's kind of, that's kind of the baseline figure that eBay provides eBay sellers and kind of, kind of the figure that I like to keep track of, keep track of. Um, so um, your e uh, eBay sales every 90 days. Now, when, when I say eBay sales, I mean unique sales. So if you have someone come along and purchase one single item, that's going to count as one sale. If you have someone come along and purchase, say, 5, 10, 15, 20, 100 items, um, as long as they purchase everything uh, together, it's one order, one payment, as long as they do all that, that's going to count as one sale. So whether you purchase one item, whether you purchase 100 items, as long as you uh, the eBay buyer pays for everything together, it's in within one order, that's going to count as one sale. So... Getting into my sales, in the past 90 days, I've had 1,500 unique eBay sales. Of those 1,500 unique eBay sales, 400 have been items priced at either a buck 25, a buck 50, or a buck 75. Items priced below 200. So 1,500 unique eBay sales in 90 days, of which 400 have been items priced at less than $2. So, getting into kind of the, um, the nitty-gritty, a few factors that you need to take into consideration are the initial cost, which for um, bulk Wizards of the Coast era, commons and uncommons, my initial cost for when I purchase larger collections of those, it's generally around $0.10 cents per card. That's kind, of, that's kind of the baseline figure that I like to base my offers on. Um, $0.10 cents per card for commons and uncommons. Obviously, first editions are a bit more, but we'll kind of talk about the, the, the bottom of the barrel stuff. Um, next up is the card supplies, which are also going to be your packaging supplies. Now, 
I have an eBay business. Um, it's an actual business, so I have a um, tax ID number with my state. With that tax ID number, I'm able to um, sign up with distributors and wholesalers to purchase um, card supplies for much cheaper than if you were shopping um, on eBay or on Amazon or your local game store. So my, my cost for these uh, card supplies, which I use as the packaging material, is much cheaper, which definitely aids in the profit margin that I'm making on this stuff. So that's a big thing to consider. If you're someone who doesn't have these um, connections, uh, it might not be worthwhile. Now, the third thing to take into account, uh, take into consideration, are the um, the actual packaging supplies, your envelopes um, and your stamps. So envelopes, um, I just anything anything that I sell for ten dollars or less. I package within a plain white envelope, throw a stamp on it, mail it out. Um, focusing on these one to two dollar items, the envelopes I actually purchased right off of Amazon, so anyone anyone can purchase those. Um, the stamps, anyone can purchase those. I purchased those right off of eBay. One thing to take into account with those is you can get stamps for a lot cheaper if you shop on um, if you shop on eBay as opposed to the going to your local post office. Um, I believe the um, forever stamps, which are used for domestic mailing within the U.S., I believe those are still at uh, 50 cents per stamp at the post office, if you purchase them at the post office. Now, if you look on eBay, you can actually find those same exact stamps. Um, I generally purchase um, 500 of the forever stamps, and my cost is 40 cents. Uh, per stamp. So just by shopping on eBay, I'm already saving 10 cents on my postage, uh, which is huge if you're selling individual commons and uncommons. Um, ev literally every penny counts uh, when you're when you're doing this type of this type of uh, business model, if you will. Um, the next thing to take into consideration is your eBay fee. That's going to be your standard uh, 10%. Um, Across the board, basically, basically on everything, uh, eBay you'll take take a ten percent cut um, from your sale. Now, going along with those fees, um, the last item to consider is your PayPal fee. Now, there's actually two types of PayPal accounts. Um, there's your standard PayPal account, which charges a fee of thirty cents plus two point nine percent per transaction. Let's call it 3% for simplicity. So 30 cents plus 3% is what the normal PayPal fee is. There's also what's called um, a micro PayPal account for people who are um, selling these uh, lower tier items. Um, basically, they'll take, they'll get rid of the 30 cent uh, per transaction fee and just charge you something, it's something like 10% across the board. Um, which, if you're selling exclusively uh, lower-tiered items, is definitely something you'd want to look into. For me personally, I haven't looked into it. I don't intend to look into it. Just because the amount of lower-tier items that I sell compared to the amount of higher-tier items that I sell, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be worthwhile. Um, I could possibly have one PayPal account um, for my lower tier items and another PayPal account for my higher tiered items. But for me, that would just, that would just get things a little bit too confused, um, confusing. And I really, really don't want to deal with that. So for me personally, it's just not worth, not worth the hassle. So, um, getting into kind of the nitty gritty, um, like I said, I have I have my lower tiered cards priced at a buck twenty five, a buck fifty, and a buck seventy five. So let's take the lowest of the low, a buck twenty five. Someone comes along, purchases a base set Weedle from me for a buck twenty five. Uh, provides payment via PayPal. So we got the buck twenty five sale. After taking into consideration my initial cost, the cost of all my card supplies, the cost of all my mailing supplies. The eBay fee and the PayPal fee, we're talking a whopping 15 cent profit on that uh, unlimited base set Weedle. 
Now that doesn't sound very good, and it definitely isn't very good. You could do a lot better than that. Um, even listing the cards in a lot as an auction or as a buy it now, you could definitely get that 15 cents a card um, and sell multiple cards at a time. Do, do 100, 100 cards, uh, call it 15 cents a card, sell it for 15 bucks. You could easily do that. Now, when the, the part that gets interesting is when you sell more than one card. So let's say another person comes along and purchases two, uh, we'll say, uh, base set Pikachus for a buck twenty-five each. Now their sale price is two dollars and fifty cents. That's their total total cost. They provide payment via PayPal. Again, after you take out the my initial cost, um, the cost of the card supplies, the cost of the mailing supplies, the eBay fee, and the PayPal fee, my um, remaining profit is right around 60 cents, just over 60 cents per card. So we went from a 15 cent profit by selling one common card to a 60 cent profit just by selling two cards. That's where you make the money. Um, if you wanna go the bulk route and list and sell cards in bulk, bulk lots, say 100 cards per lot, you're not going to be able to get that 60 cent profit per card. You'll never be able to get that unless you find someone who is um, looking to buy cards for their collection and needs a whole bunch of those cards that you're selling uh, to uh, fill their collection. You won't be able to get that 60 cent um, per card price point. So getting back into my, um, my uh, eBay sales in the past 90 days, if you remember, I mentioned um, we had 400 eBay sales with a price point less than $200, or I'm sorry, uh, $2. Um, 400 eBay sales with a price point less than $2. Now, how many people um, do you get purchasing one card versus how many people do you get purchasing two or more cards? In my personal experience, um, I was actually a bit surprised by this. You do get a lot of people who will just purchase that one card for a buck twenty-five. I even have people all the time purchase that one card for a buck twenty-five. Plus, they're international, so they'll also pay shipping on top of that. So they'll buy a card for a buck twenty-five and then pay two dollars shipping on top of that. So their total cost for this one common card is three twenty-five. Um, but that's that's a whole different story. I was I was kind of surprised by that though. Anyway. Um, so how many people do you get purchasing this one individual card versus purchasing two or more cards? In my experience, um, we'll make the numbers easy. Uh, we'll call it 50-50. It's kind of a 50-50 shot, whether that person purchases one single card or purchases two or more cards. So roughly 200 of my 400 transactions, um, I'm making 15 cents per, per transaction. The other 200 um, per, uh, transactions, I'm making at least 60 cents per card. Now, those transactions could consist of two cards, it may consist of three cards, five cards, 10 cards, 20 cards, 50 cards. My general um, transactions, if you will, for uh, commons and uncommons, are generally between um, two and three cards at a time per order. I also receive a lot of orders that are between five and ten cards. However, I do receive multiple orders every week that are somewhere between 20 and 30 common and uncommon cards. So when you take those um, per uh, purchases that have 20 to 30 cards, five to ten cards, two to three cards, you're making at least 60 cents profit on all of these cards. So in my opinion, it is definitely worthwhile selling individual common and uncommon cards. Now granted, it does, like I mentioned earlier, it does take an extensive amount of time. Um, for example, I um, this past weekend, um, I'll go to the post office on, on uh, Friday afternoon, and then I won't go to the post office again until Monday morning. This past weekend, 
I had 120 uh, packages to uh, package and mail out on Monday morning. Of those 120 packages, there were probably 50 that were just these um, common and uncommon cards. So you, you are going to see an increased number of sales. However, you are going to have to definitely work harder for it. So if you're a person who's uh, limited on time or um, doesn't want to devote this much time to selling on eBay, then it, the time factor is a big issue and something to be considered. But for me personally, I don't mind the time factor. Uh, I don't mind putting in the time to get these orders packaged and mailed out. So it's worthwhile for me. It adds an extra source of income to my eBay store. Anyway, uh, that's what I got for this um, kind of rant. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. Hope you learned something. And until next time, thanks for watching.